Hey there, this is Ed Beard again with the Employer's Edge. And I wanted to come at you today on the one thing you can do that can really help move a conflict resolution conversation to a productive end. I just got off a coaching call here and I think I can help you. Because have you ever noticed when in the midst of conflict resolution, you could be a party to it or you could just be a mediator for it. You could maybe have a referee kind of position in the whole thing is that it's just a big fat gray area. All the steps that you learned in the class, the conflict resolution class, they all fly out the window. It's so emotionally charged for whatever reason. It just it just all breaks and falls apart and nothing happens and people leave conversations like that even more pissed off than when they came. So just keep this one thing in mind. I think it'll really help you out. Do not start conflict resolution meetings, get togethers in the detail. Do not start in the detail. People argue in the detail. Remember their goal is to be right and they want to get agreement on their version of right. So does the other person. That is in the detail. If you go there, if you start conversations in the detail, you are going nowhere because people will just get, it's, it's just there's endless detail to detail on top of detail. You, it will literally go nowhere. And maybe you've already noticed that. I suggest what you're going to do, and we just did here on the phone, is start the conversation in the concept. What are we working towards? What are we moving towards? Let me give you an example. So in this situation, you have a VP, someone in their IT department. Yeah, they're not getting along so good. The VP just shut this person down, and this person now is off for two days, not working, and projects are now starting to back up, which makes the VP even more angry and upset because things aren't happening and it just starts to compound itself. Don't try and understand why did you leave? Like what were you feeling when you left? What was the reason? What did they do? What did this person do? I'm already getting a headache over the deal, right? So when you bring people together, have them define what are you working towards? Here's a question you might ask. Describe for me the working, how you want the working environment to meet you and you meet it every day. What does that even look like to you? And get the VP to say, you know, I want people to be happy. I want them to produce. I mean, we got to get stuff done. And I want them to be in a frame of mind that they can just feel like they can just come in and go do it. Got that. that same person here. Yeah, I, I just want to not have to worry about conflict. I just want to go do what it is I have to do. I love my job. I love doing it. I just want to go do it. Hold that thought. All right. Here's where, and once you set that baseline, now you have a productive direction for your conversation. Because when things flare up, like I took two days off, and they said they took two days off because they just had to get away from here. Oh, this place was just so crazy. I just had to break away. I just had to get away from it all. That conversation now is not going to disagree with you. You can get away from that all you want. My question to you is, how does that add to the environment you want? Well, it doesn't. I mean, I'm not saying it does. I, I just I get away for a couple of days. I, like I said, I don't disagree with that. But my question for you is, how does leaving for a couple of days get you the environment you just described? Well, it doesn't really. Okay. So just so you know, you're not doing things that are getting you the environment you just described. See, we're in the concept. We're in the big picture. The VP says, you have to do it my way do it like that every time. I'm the boss. It's your job to do it my way. Not going to argue with your role as the boss. Not going to argue how you understand your role as the boss. My question to you is, how does, how do, does looking at it that way get you the environment you want? Because right now you have a person taking two days off not producing. And you said what you want is an environment that producing and you're getting the exact opposite. I know, but I'm the boss. It's their job to do what I say. Not going to argue with that. Not going to argue with that at all. My question to you is, how does that get you production? How does that thinking, how does that frame of mind, how does that belief get you productivity? Because your best IT guy just took two days off. All right. So see, see, here's where I'm going now. You've trapped them down to moving forward into the future that where their belief and being right is not a part of it now. It's is that action, that belief, getting them what they even said they wanted. And they come to their own conclusions now that their belief and their actions are not consistent with what they want. And now they have to do something that's more consistent. So we didn't even go to, you're right, you're wrong. 
stay away from that conversation. Clarity is always more important than being right. Being right is an endless pit that no one ever comes out of. No one ever comes out of it. All you do is just stay mad at each other and build resentment. And then good people leave. That's what happens. So in conflict resolution, don't go down the road of being right. Work in the big picture. Move towards the big picture. Move towards the future. Move towards big things, not detail. You lose in the detail. Know that now. Understand how that works in your conflict resolution conversations. It would just be way more effective. I suggest you do that. All right, take care.